I saw the TV glow as a frightening, dire, yet effervescent monument to the power of storytelling as a means of escape, even if, perhaps by design, it doesn't ultimately arrive at a satisfying destination. 9 out of 10. Here's why. From the word go, writer-director Jane Schoenbrunn masterfully follows up We Are All Going to the World's Fair to command the eyes and ears. Shots alternate between grounded dialogue amid liminal spaces and descents into hypnagogic horror, while the soundtrack runs a flawless gamut of period-appropriate rock and eerie ambient numbers, all intermittently festooned with doodles the same shade as our protagonist's favorite doubly fictional TV show, The Pink Opaque. From fourth wall breaks to interludes in said Buffy-esque series, elaborate lore slash icky creature design and all, there's no telling what awaits behind the next scene change. And yet it's all wrapped up in a nostalgic ode to growing up in suburbia at the end of the millennium. Nowhere more delightfully than the implicit abbreviation of Void High School. Like the galaxy projection at the film's climax, though, it's the star that stands out the most. With his prodigious Adam's apple and resting um face, Justice Smith is captivating as a young man struggling with a sick mom, a surly dad, Fred Durst for some reason, and social isolation who stumbles into a tumultuous friendship with a troubled pink opaque fangirl Mandy, played by Bridgette Lundy Payne, delivering at least one award-worthy monologue. Smith, admittedly, isn't entirely convincing as both a high schooler and a grown adult, but whether his character is conflicted about gender or just hollowed out by years of stress and regret, there's something for everyone to relate to when he freaks out. Is the pink opaque real in any quantifiable sense to our heroes? A more high-concept flick might scratch that ambiguity and uncover a broader conspiracy, a la the Candle Cove season of Channel Zero or The Matrix. To Schoenbrunn, though, it's seemingly more about the feeling that such media can evoke regardless, especially during a time, in adolescence and as much as in history, when parents don't necessarily know or care what their kids are going through. My only notable criticism is that I feel more could have been done to explore the protagonist's trauma beyond hints of queerness and abusive upbringings. Subtlety is valuable, but once the ostensibly true nature of the pink opaque is revealed, it ends up feeling more like a joke aside than an earnest emotional rug pull making me reassess what the stakes and logic of all of this even were. I saw the TV glow is a personal story, though, and focused accordingly. So maybe one ought to leave such hopes of clearer, grander closure at the door. After all, it's not like the show is called The Pink Translucent.